Godfather. What you gonna do, brother? Oh yeah! Are you ready? Hey yo! And that's the bottom line. Into a nose dog. Well, all I can say is someone's been eating their body ones and saying their prayers. <laughs> Life sucks, and then you die. Travis Gmon, Oklahoma, and you're next. What? Oh, oh that's the one. Oh, just fear the rock. That teeth clean and set. Rest in. Peace. Welcome back to the JM Report, and I'm still your host, Good Old JM. This is episode 98. After a nine months absence, hiatus, exile, whatever you want to call it, I am back. I am hoping, knock on wood, to continue doing this on a weekly basis. And what better time than to restart, so to speak? Ironically, after a WrestleMania event this past weekend that I was so fortunate enough to attend for WrestleMania 37 at Raven James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. I was able to attend both shows and the crowd was just as uproaring, uplifting, and pun to pun electrifying as it came across on Peacock or the WWE Network, depending where you saw it from around the world, which I'll cover here in a bit. But I, I guess I should explain a little bit what's been going on for the past nine months and no, for those who are wondering, I did not become a father. As far as I know, no, no, nothing like that. But uh, as you can imagine, for many of us, not that I'm speaking for all of you, but many of us have been and still are affected by what's going on around the world, specifically of uh, COVID-19. Hopefully things can continue to get better despite a possible other um, outbreak, but hopefully it'll be better contained considering now a year ago from today, it weren't not even one, let alone three optional vaccinations to take. I know I took mine last Saturday, right before I went to Mania, as an extra precaution because I wasn't sure what, what protocols they had out there other than filling out a questionnaire before you enter the building. But for me, as far as being away for so long from uh, doing more JM reports and other episodes of Talking with JM, which I did have quite a handful in store last summer from August to about October, I had a few guests lined up, but unfortunately... They had to deal with their with their personal issues, as did I, and we all agree that we'll get back to it eventually later on and have um, a more better direct way to, to to communicate with each other. And how was that exactly? Well, my previous location at CSB Studios unfortunately fell victim of uh, being shut down, and I wasn't aware to about maybe maybe two months after it happened. There wasn't any memo or email sent out to all alumni or anything like that. I just jumped on their website where I would normally make my reservations to use one of their studios and the website was shut down. Couldn't even log in. So I reached out to the, the now former campus director and she told me that it was shut down. Even after hiring a new campus coordinator, not even maybe this would have been March of 2019, around the, around the same time where the pandemic pretty much started to pick up. And that summer, Things, weren't lo- things were not looking too good, and slow, slowly but surely, to my understanding, things just started shutting down. And another reason why I took time off away from making jam reports was that, uh, well, I found, at the time, a third job. Uh, besides the uh, Cox Media Group, I was also into making uh, deliveries for a little bit. And together, even that combined, which I'm still affiliated with, um, wasn't really cutting it for me as far as income. So I was very fortunate, and I believe I shared this story in one of my last episodes, but I was very fortunate to be reached out and contacted by Figures Toys Company. And a third job, Monday through Friday, full-time, weekends off, thankfully, and been there for nearly a year now, come this May 4th. Yes, may the 4th be with you. And <laughs> so you can imagine I've been very, very busy, very fortunate, and lots of change in my personal life as well, for the better, that is. And again, what better time to come back than... Post-Mania, which is ironic because I believe I started the Jam Report post-Mania, I want to say 34? Was that 34? When, um, wow, it's so long. But basically the post-Mania when Daniel Bryan won the title from Batista and uh, Randy Orton when they were in New Orleans. And here I am, back at it again. 
But I'm going to keep this one really brief. Just wanted to announce that I'm back. The biggest story really coming out this week, almost a year to the day, and I'm not wasting any time getting into it, but a year to the day that I guess will be now called Black Thursday. And why is it only when WWE have massive layoffs that whatever they are the week it happens on, you just throw in the word black at the beginning. So it's Black Friday, Black Tuesday, Black Monday. Well, this year, again, almost to the, almost to the year, the day of, Black Thursday took place and there were massive layoffs, many of which was surprises even, I, I would assume even to those that were receiving those phone calls and said, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to let you go. There were reports that there were going to be more names listed today. However, nothing has come out. There have been no reports whatsoever. Nothing on WWE.com as of this recording. And as I sit here, it's just past 10 p.m. Just finished watching the episode of SmackDown, the post, uh, the SmackDown after WrestleMania, I guess. So just to recap here, the following have been released. And I still kind of wrap my head around some of these. But okay, so the Iconics. Both Billy Kay and Payne Royce were released, which still boggles my mind. And th there was actually a story that came out today that supposedly, besides the main reason that all these names were cut, was due to budget cuts. That each one received a phone call from the current uh, lead uh, talent relations, or the head of talent relations, I should say, uh, John Laurinaitis, personally placed a phone call to each individual, including Billy Kay and Payne Royce, that they're being released. They all they all do fall under the 90 day no compete clause right now the um, the end date is about july 14th to my understanding give or take but here's the thing about the iconics i don't know about everyone listening but i found them tremendously entertaining whether they were heels faces even when they were split up which still doesn't make sense after that last draft i don't care what they call it it's a it's a, it's a draft you break them apart Payne royce had previous commitments for those who don't know competed in um swimsuit competitions also in, in, in fitness training model that uh, those those sorts of um, competitions i believe she came in second in one of them and billy k was just left wandering for a little bit and had some tv time as of as of a few months ago was having those uh, the, the the gimmick of um showing off her eight by ten portfolio her, her resume in the back basically trying to align herself with someone and anyone that was willing to take her in and on top of that she was just part of a tag team turmoil match during wrestlemania weekend so you can imagine whether she knew then or day of the cuts what ran through her mind and and in fairness everyone um, there's maybe one or two exceptions that i haven't heard or seen make public statements but the majority of the statements have been positive very thankful and pretty much they feel bummed out but it's part of the business unfortunately so with billy Kay, so Basically, I saw it like this. You break her up, you split her from a tag team, the Iconics, only to put her in another tag team. I believe she teamed up with Lacey Evans for a little bit before she got pregnant. Yeah, I missed out a lot. <laughs> and teamed up with Carmella for WrestleMania. So kind of like now with Otis, you break up his tag team. And ironically, Tucker, who really didn't go anywhere, unfortunately, had nothing for him creatively, I guess, is the, the go-to response. And he was also another name that was released. But I think he was more thrilled than anything about that, hence not being one of the uh, individuals that released a public statement. He was just posing in a polo shirt. I believe he was playing golf somewhere on Twitter, holding up uh, a cocktail, and he was just living life. Nikki James was also cut. Very thankful she had a very lengthy uh, statement thanking Vince McMahon, thanking WWE, Triple H. I think she would have contributed a lot more had given the time. Another name which boggled my mind just as much as the main one here, before I get, mention his name, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green, who, when was this, in November? Late November uh, November of last year, breaks her wrist accidentally. And the story was that she was supposed to win that match, but unfortunately got severely injured and had to be taken out of, well, off the, uh, the, the talent roster, obviously, and put on a DL. Had surgery to repair the damage. And for the past few weeks, my understanding was she was at the Performance Center gearing up for a comeback. And there were also rumors that Maybe she would have gone, gone back to NXT. We'll never know now, but Chelsea Green was another big name that surprised me. Yes, I know what I said. And not even given the chance, and everyone's like, oh, I can't wait to wait. I can't wait to see Chelsea Green back in the ring, and how oh, that's going to turn out, hopefully, for the better. Mix things up a little bit in the women's division, which is, considering the names that were released, even more so stale now. I mean, slightly stirred up a bit with the respective winners that came out of the both nights of WrestleManias of uh, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair, excuse me. And, and I'm fine with that. I'll get, I'll, you know, I'll get to that in a bit, but I'm fine with that. But man, Chelsea Green, 
never had a chance. Uh, Wesley Blake, I don't believe he's released a statement, but we haven't seen him in a while, so I'm not too surprised about that. Kalisto, who was just part of that Battle Royal a week ago on SmackDown for the go-home show to WrestleMania, gone. Bo Dallas. It feels almost like two years since I've seen Bo Dallas on either main roster show or all SmackDown. I still believe, and I know I'm, I'm not the only one, but I still believe there was a missed opportunity there to have him, even if it was a, a brief run or a brief program, to have something to do with the Firefly Funhouse in in some capacity. Didn't have to be tag team partners. Didn't have to be a manager or the mouthpiece for the for Bray Wyatt or the Fiend, but something, some something of a recurring role to have him quote unquote turn to the dark side. And obviously leave out the part and they try to keep Cape Favor that much as possible. Not acknowledge that they that they were legit brothers. Again, that's something else we'll never know. And that's me just fantasying, booking, whatnot. Uh, Mojo Raleigh was a late release. And it's funny, I was just remembering now, Jey Uso came out to wrestle Cesaro. And Jey Uso walked over to the trophy of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. If you pause it just right, you see the, the list that was engraved in front of the trophy. About half. Half that list is not even there anymore. You, you see Matt Hardy's name. You see Paul White's name. Mojo Raleigh now. And everybody else somewhat sticking around. Cesaro is his first name on the list. Ironically, who's facing the recent winner of the of, of that Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And had a good match, but not to get too far off track here. What's the payoff? What What is the payoff there? But anyway, so Mojo Raleigh's gone. I mentioned Taco, Bo Dallas. And probably the biggest name and biggest shock of all on this list is Samoa Joe. My understanding is Samoa Joe, he was ready to make a comeback. Whether he, whether it's Vince or Dunn or Pritchard. Well, we're not sure what to do with you now, so let's make you a commentator, which I think he did a good job on. And from what I gathered, Joe's doctors, yeah, you're good to go. Whenever you're ready, get back in the ring. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But what I gather, it's WWE doctors that wouldn't clear Samoa Joe. Now, whether that's coincidence or timing that... Some of those stories have been coming out recently prior to these to these cuts. And that was a plan all along. I don't know. But he was someone else that played a huge part as far as the commentating team goes at WrestleMania weekend. Only to find out a few days later, yeah, you're gone. You're gone. So, 10 names. Rumored that there will be more names mentioned at some point. Ah, hasn't happened yet. And don't, don't even get me started as far as, well, WWE, aren't, aren't they getting multi-million or billion-dollar deals from that company and this network and blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty sure if anyone brings that up on Twitter, if they haven't already, and tag whether it's Vince Dunn, Kevin Dunn, that is, or Bruce Pritchard, they'll probably give you their corporate PR response. It's business until you run your own multi-million, multi-billion-dollar company and, it, and, and you have to make tough decisions like these and so on and so forth which is always their go-to response anyway. Okay, fine, but may- maybe if you better explain exactly where a company as big as WWE, and they have been for years now, post-Ruthless Aggression Era, and they rebounded tremendously. Because there was a time in the mid-2000s, it wasn't really too... Hell, it was, there was a time in the in the 2010s, things weren't look, looking too good. Remember they were having half the buildings, half the arenas filled? How many tweets that you see that fans attended, whether it was Raw or SmackDown, and the arena had half the arena covered up in, in a giant black tarp or a curtain? Some of the pay-per-views were at half capacity. The, the pay-per-view buys were down. Now they're in a good place financially. So why these cuts? Besides the current reasoning, budget cuts, is there more to it? Maybe, maybe not. But my argument now is it cannot always be because someone like myself or other fans that are just watching it for what it is, I just watch for wrestling matches, <laughs> stories like don't, don't, don't even get me started with script, over scripted promos and how long they last versus how many matches you do have in two hours or three hours. But anyway, if there was a better understanding and communication to your fans that you supposedly listen to and explain enough from your end as to why the money that comes in, not, not only from the contracts that you sign with sponsors and networks and advertisements and whatnot, what else is, is that a is the money is being used for exactly besides going into the next show that may have a live crowd there or i'm sure not all of it's going to go into salaries i'm sure it's not all of it's going to go into vince mcmahon's personal account or anybody else's you know back pocket point being all of that needs to be explained better and in enough detail that it leaves everyone at the very best satisfied from what you have to say but i don't know if that time will ever happen they don't have to release records of numbers or you know bank statements and uh, uh, check stubs or anything like that I got three jobs and from sure pure curiosity I asked one of my bosses the income not their personal income but 
there's contracts too dealing with second and third parties and I, I'm I'll be the first to admit I'm not I'm not a mathematical genius never been really good with numbers as I got a calculator but at least it was explained to me like well you take the X amount of money that comes in from this sponsor 20% goes there 20% goes there 40% here and so on and so forth okay just not a curiosity just to give me at least a better idea how a particular business would work to my surprise when that was explained to me breaking it down to percentage not one was said that it, th- this percentage is the worker's salary that's something else completely different again i was fine with but black thursday hit hard whether or not there'll be more names added who knows time will tell <clears throat> so so let's get into my experience at wrestlemania 37 tampa florida raymond james stadium Two nights, purchasing tickets. Uh, well, let's just put it this way. Uh, I know someone that was able to get tickets before they even went on sale to the public. Now, if you remember, it was announced, uh, it, w- it was a Tuesday that WrestleMania tickets were going to go on sale. And then it was pushed back until that Friday. Part of the reason was WWE was pushing for a bigger crowd than what ended up being there at about a 25,000 capacity. They wanted more than a Super Bowl. It had about 25,000 as well in the same stadium. Florida officials said no, 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 no. And one of the other reasons why the ticket sale date was pushed back, someone in WWE assumed that Florida officials were going to agree to squeeze in a few more hundred, maybe a couple of more thousand people into the stadium and had this different layout in the seating charts. And Raymond James, Raymond James Stadium ended up having these two nights. Oh, crap. Well, more, more sections to be shut down or, tarp, or covered up, tarped off, whatever. And it didn't take that long, about two or three days, and then finally, that Friday, tickets went on sale. And let's just say a lot of uh, Florida officials had first dibs and received a phone call. Hey, you want to go? Sure. <laughs> didn't take much to convince me. And I was hoping to go, and I guess the stars aligned for me, and I was very fortunate. So, day one, I get there and go to my seat, and I was from... I was sitting on the left-hand side of the pirate, of the pirate ship, <laughs> but um, not not floor level, uh, one level up. Uh, it was section 279, I believe. But it was good seatings. I, I was very concerned of the pillars that were holding up the lighting over the ring was going to cover my view or block my view of the ring, and it didn't. So I was able to see every match as it played out. Unless um, the, the only time I really looked up at the screen was to um, watch the wrestlers that obviously fell on the opposite side that I can't see through the, the canvas to see what's going on. And that would be when I would look up at the screen. And there were multiple, uh, not jumbotrons, but titantrons. The scoreboards were used as titantrons. And of course, the screens above the ring as well. One thing that they added, and I'm not sure if they've done this with football games, I haven't attended a Buccaneers game yet. But one thing that they added, not right away, but eventually, is you can hear the commentating. It was a low volume, but you could still make it out. And it came through the house speakers that were behind the seatings where you have to enter through each each floor's lobby. And I said, well, that's a nice touch. I, 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 will, I could have done personally without it, but it is what it is, but I thought it was an interesting touch. So yeah, day one, <laughs> they weren't kidding about that rain delay. And it wasn't as bad as it came through, as it came across on television. The rain wasn't pouring down as if it was hail or hurricane rain. It, it, it did get very cloudy. It did get very dark. But I, I just found it hilarious. And I told everyone basically all week because they were asking me what happened during the rain delay, which was about half an hour worth. Well, they did the opening ceremony, the opening uh, video package. As that's playing, you see the wrestlers appearing on stage. Everyone was going bananas at that point. And... You get Vince McMahon's introduction. He welcomes us back to the live crowd, to the live audience. Then we have the national anthem. And I missed it on day one. I didn't miss it on day two of the, um, what were they, the F-16s that flew over the stadium. They weren't directly over the stadium. And the... I guess the the ledges, it's an open stadium, but the ledges that that were overhead just had them out of my view. But thankfully, the the next day, it was a little, slightly more centered, so I was able to see it and, and catch it on video, which I, I'm going to try to upload over the weekend on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash goodoljm. And what I found funny was, welcome to WrestleMania, and, and then they played the opening package of Mania. It finishes, we get that poor man's impression of Johnny Depp of Pirates of the Caribbean, and well... I guess the, f- the fireworks and the pyros got wet, so they're not using them. And then it came the announcement. I think it was more of a uh, Raymond James Stadium call than it was WWE. 
if you're a old school fan like I am, you know that they've had shows, whether it was in Canada, in the Caribbean. I, I, there might have been one in New York, actually, for Shea Stadium, where there were not rain delays, but the show literally went on during rain. And I think one comes to mind from the Caribbean that uh, it was Hulk Hogan and Mr. Wonderful. Just rain buckets and buckets of water down on them. And, and it was also an open stadium. It was during their match, and obviously they cut it short, but they had their match in the rain for a couple of minutes, and, and everyone's bragging about all oh, the first time ever. Yes and no. I guess you want to say the first time ever on paper for, for opening pay-per-view. Yeah, but just imagine this happened during the event, and it had to be a rain delay similar to a baseball game. And I'm pretty sure they would have uh, handled it the way they did with everyone having unscripted promos, which, which I found more entertaining and more realistic, for lack of a better term, especially the, the Kevin Owens promo that he cut. I felt that more than any, any other time that Owens would come out and cut a promo on the KO show or wherever. And of course, they're heavily scripted compared to this one that he cut at Mania. Unbelievable. So in short, welcome to Mania and now get the hell out. <laughs> but I was able to come back on time and find my seat again, just as Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan come out to host both, both nights. And I've uploaded a few videos. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if I uploaded the particular one where Hogan and O'Neill come out in their pirate costumes. But it was in, on that. I think that was day two. But it was on that particular night. And my section anyway. Because I went back on Peacock to see how I came across on television. You have to really listen and pay attention for the background noise from the crowd. But my, my section was every time Hogan would begin speaking, nothing but booze. In my area, but once you go back to Titus and he starts speaking nothing but cheers, which I found interesting. And then th there was this one female behind me asking the questions, why are they booing Hogan? Why? I'm not going to get into it right now as to why it was or what I think it was. But clearly this person didn't know what's been going on the past few years with Hulk Hogan. And I'll leave it at that. And if that's not the only reason, then I'm, I'm clearly missing something. And I would ask, why is everyone booing Hulk Hogan? Especially in this hometown of Tampa. But it is what it is. And... Again, I enjoyed both shows for what they were. Night one opened up with the WWE Championship, Bobby Lashley retaining over Drew McIntyre. And, you know, I'll be honest, I I saw that coming, just the way it was built. And I just couldn't see, personally, I just, I just couldn't see Lashley as being not only a short-term champion, but also a transitional champion. That, that's what The Miz was for the two, three weeks or whatever he had it. But I just couldn't see Lashley doing that. Then we had the turmoil tag team match where the winners will face the women's tag team champions on night two. And that was won by Natalia and Tamina. And turns out there were a few uh, wardrobe malfunctions. And if, if, you're, if you're curious, last I saw, they were still up on the network or on Peacock. I'm pretty sure if they haven't already, they're going to eventually edit those out. But uh, if, you, if you're that curious and that, you know, perverted, then yeah, go ahead and check that out. Match of the night, as far as I'm concerned, was Cesaro defeating Seth Rollins. Well-deserved. Finally had a match one-on-one -on -one at Mania, and he wins. Probably one of the more entertaining matches of the night was the Raw Tag Team title match, where the New Day lost their tag team titles to AJ Styles and Omos. Everybody in my section, and, and I think this came across better on TV, erupted when finally got to see almost in the ring to see what he has, and he impressed. He really impressed. Strowman and Shane McMahon in the steel cage match. It, it, it is what it is. Strowman wins. Shane had to get in his high spots or falling off somewhere. Surprised he didn't jump off the pirate ship. It was a tag team match later on. Uh, I think I think the good guys won. And the main event for night one was Bianca Belair finally winning the SmackDown Women's Championship over Sasha Banks. For those who missed it, and I think a few people have posted already. Besides the emotional uh, portion of it, and especially in the beginning, the bell didn't ring yet. Did not ring yet, and Bianca just couldn't help herself. Just very emotional, very happy, and tears of joy in her in her eyes as, as much as she tried to fight it back. But after the match, and by the way, uh, Bianca Belair, um, Belair earned a lot more respect from me as a competitor. Not that I wasn't giving her any, but in this particular match, and I know, and I know she's done it before, I, I guess it's been a while for me, but the, the two spots, obviously the emotional that she was in before the match started, and during the match where she pressed Sasha over her head outside the ring and walked up the steps with Sasha still over her head and threw her back in the ring. It's like, okay... I mean, I, that, when was that? Uh, but it was a SmackDown episode where she had to carry Otis over her shoulders. It was the endurance challenge from Bailey at the time and impressively carried Otis who was about 285 pushing 300 and carried Otis over her shoulders from one side of the ring to the other that was impressive but here Bianca becomes the champion a very emotional celebration I know they went off the air at one point but the celebration kept going there was more fireworks when it off when it went off the air and yeah congratulations I'll go out to Bianca Belair and they had a great moment 
not to get too ahead of myself, but you know, on this week's episode of NXT, now on Tuesday nights, by the way, it was Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, who would win the Raw Women's Championship on night two over Asuka, and Rachel Gonzalez, who won the NXT Women's title during TakeOver last week. All three women shared the ring on NXT this week and held up their respective titles over their heads. And yeah, uh, <laughs> doesn't get any better than that. The landscape of the women's roster is changing hopefully in the right direction if you're creative and know what the hell you're doing time will tell and i know i, know I always say that the opening match for night two wasn't really surprised but i guess they, they just had to get it out the considering the props that they had to be had to be used brandy orton defeated the fiend after alexa bliss turned on him and what a visual and i, and I didn't mention this in from night one but if you notice, they used uh, little drone lights to have, not everyone's, but s- some of the wrestlers' logos or, or um, phrases lit up in the sky. And that was an awesome idea. Kudos, whoever came up with that idea, the team that put it together with those, how many drones, who knows, to spell out, let me in, to have uh, Seamus' uh, uh, Celtic cross. Uh, Sasha Banks' uh, sunglasses. I thought it was, I thought that was awesome. And uh, they, were, they were they used it several times. So who else might have used it? Uh, they knew they use it. I can't remember. It has to be another occasion that they use it. But I, I, now I have to look back. But anyway, the drones were, were used tremendously. And more than likely going forward, they'll probably use it again, depending if there's another outdoor event such as Raymond James Stadium and it's a night show. Obviously, it'd be a better time to use it than that when the sun's still <laughs> setting. But Randy on it over the Fiend, uh, I read a report that Vince McMahon literally changed the outcome the day of. If that's the case, that does not surprise me w- whatsoever. That, and that could mean anything. Randy Owner wasn't really, uh, as far as this past week on Raw, he acknowledges the Fiend, but then that's it. He's already back in the title run for WWE Championship against Bobby Lashley, but lost a triple threat between himself, Braun Strowman, and McIntyre, who will now face Lashley at the next pay-per-view, which is Backlash. I know it's a, I know it's a different name, but I'm, I'm calling it Backlash. Uh, the not, not the Raw, but the women's tag team titles were retained by Sasha Shayna, basically, excuse me, and Nia Jax over Natalia and Tamina, who won the tag team tor- turmoil match from the night before. Kevin Owens, in probably one of the matches of the night, defeated Sami Zayn. Sheamus wiped the floor with Riddle to capture the United States Championship. Apollo Crews, and, and back-to-back, I thought was, it's been a while, but it's been mind-blowing, especially seeing it live. But Apollo Crews would capture the Intercontinental Championship over Big E in a Nigerian drum fight, which just different name to call a street fight. After um, Papa Tui, is that how you his name? Papa Tui, I haven't seen him in a while interfered on behalf of Cruz and got the win over Big E. And I think now he's going under a different name. It was just pronounced today. What the? A commander? Ca- commander or captain? But I, I guess they're forming their own military now from Nigeria. Oh, okay. I mentioned before, Rhea Ripley defeated Asuka in quite convincing fashion. And it wasn't like uh, Asuka was expected to kick out of uh, Ripley's finishing move. Like, no, one, two, three, that was it. Oh, okay. Not complaining, but wow. Okay. If, if Rhea Ripley wasn't taken seriously before, at least on the main roster, she is now. And in the main event for night two was Roman Reigns retaining, and, and I did I did see this coming. Ro- Roman Reigns defeating Daniel Bryan, and the other guy was involved in a triple threat match, the Universal Championship. And for those who are wondering, these names I'm not mentioning, well, I, I have my reasons. So that was your quick WrestleMania rundown and results of night one and two for WrestleMania 37. As far as the Universal title goes, whether it's still rumored or a possibility that you're going to see Roman Reigns versus The Rock for the title at a mania. Well, it was mentioned, and I don't think anyone... Well, how can I put it? Not that not that they didn't take it serious, but I think it was more, I believe it when I see it kind of reaction from a lot of fans. That being, well, how can Rock not be there? How, how can Rock not want to wrestle at a mania? Not his hometown, but, you know, his home, his home state of Florida against his cousin for a title and this and that. I'm pretty sure it, it could still happen, maybe in the next year or so. Obviously not be in, a, in their home state of Florida between Roman and, and Mr. Johnson, Wayne. But also the same weekend that WrestleMania was taking place was also the same time that he began filming Black Adam, the next DC Extended Universe film. So similar to Batista, unable to attend the Hall of Fame this year, or this year for last year, there were scheduling conflicts and previous commitments. Can't really fault anyone for that, so it is what it is. And yet there were a whole, whole bunch of other stories out this week. I figured, again, that i just come on now and share where I've been for the past nine months, a little bit of insight of what's been going on this year, excuse me, this week, and of course, uh, share my experience for or from WrestleMania. Can't wait to the next one, the, the next one that's going to be here, that is, and I know it probably won't be at least for the next five to ten years. God willing, I'm still alive. I'll definitely be there. So I realize this episode is very short compared to other times. The most I've 
I've done over two hours and that's with notes but I'm literally just winging it here trying to get back into the flow of things but uh, good things are coming good times are ahead with our JM report and I will close lastly with this and moving forward <clears throat> excuse me the emotion <laughs> but moving forward future episodes of the JM report and talking with JM these episodes will be brought to you by figurestoycompany.com if you're looking for retro figures between kiss Anna Barbera, DC, the Monkeys, the Three Stooges. Figurestoy.com is your one source for all your retro figures. They stem anywhere from 6 to 24 inch figures. Also, exclusive, say that again, exclusive pro wrestling figure action figures from Ring of Honor. And they're also the series of Rising Stars. As, and, and these are all brand new figures that came in in the past six months from Shane Strickland, Joey Janela, uh, Flip Gordon. The Young Bucks, yes, they have they have their version of the Young Bucks as well. Uh, Coke Cabana, Jeff Cobb, Amber Gallows, Homicide, Eva Lise, who was released by AEW this week, by the way. Brian Cage, and many more. That's, that's just to name a few. And there are also some individual personalized autograph figures as well that you can purchase. You head over to figurestoy.com or wrestlingsuperstores.com for more action figures and accessories. As your number one pro wrestling accessory shop. And when you get there, tell them that JM sent you. And I, th- and I want to th- personally thank figurestoy.com, well, excuse me, figurestoycompany.com for this opportunity moving forward. I will have a better layout than this next time on a JM report. But I will have their links to their individual websites. There's a lot more to find, including DVDs and replica championship belts. For example, classic and current Ring of Honor championship replica belts at their websites and so much more. So once again, head over to figurestoycompany.com or wrestlingsuperstore.com for all details. So, till next time, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Everyone, be safe, be good. Till next time. Today, I found the strength to open my eyes. all